Welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we're taking on water towers this week. Yeah. A Luke original. Well, see, I don't want to take credit for this one because my my <laughs> Alexa device threw some random video up that I said, oh, Alexa, play that story. And it seemed really interesting. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell James all about this. And then whenever I actually did the research on water towers, keep listening to this episode, by yeah, the way. Yeah, do that. Uh, it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. I would say it's great, just not as great. Exactly. That's why you should keep listening. Keep listening. Okay, so for me, a couple shout-outs I wanted to give at the start. Mostly a big thank you to HowStuffWorks.com for a great write-up that I for sure did not steal any information Cut from. And paste. But I did fact-check my already wealth of knowledge on the topic you went to the library them. you went to the library yes. and did your research yes did you know that the library no longer makes you sign those little cards in the back do you remember doing how do you that? get books then i guess it's all on the internets now i haven't been to the library in a really yeah, long time me neither I other just than had to, this conversation other than to use the bathroom because library oh, really? bathrooms are always exceptionally clean well, that's a good point another big shout out to our friends at concerning reality who did oh. a quick video on how water towers work so go subscribe to them or else t-dog t-dog that's right t-dog did a good job on that video he did his one video on water towers has more views than <laughs> all of our videos combined so our three listeners or subscribers on youtube go check out concerning reality all right, so what's a water tower, Luke? I believe it's a tower <laughs> that holds water. Yep, it's pretty much that simple. Yep, okay, so that's we're what done. you guys got here. We're okay, no, thank no. you for joining us. So uh, a water tower, and, and, and keep in mind that, that there's sometimes they call them standpipes. There's, so there's a couple different names for can them. Can we talk about that real quick? Okay. So the standpipe. Stand. Stand. Pipe. Not sand. Not sand pipe. Stand pipe. Okay. I was trying to figure out the difference between a stand pipe and a water tower. And what I came up with is there's not really a big difference. It seems like the name is interchangeable mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes. In some locations. And maybe stand pipes are more like they, from what I saw, they looked more like silos on yeah. a farm. Like they're the same size, the whole the whole length of the tower. But why is, it, called a, but why is it a pipe? I, I don't know. It might have just been okay. named poorly. But there's also, don't get confused, there's other kinds of stand pipes out there. Um, one is the cylindrical tower we're talking about. Full, that's basically a water tower. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one that's more recent, and it's used to describe like some sort of piping system that's used for firefighting. Okay. So it's something about the that's, firefighters that, connect up to that one. That's what you see uh, w when you go to buildings. And outside of the building, you see a fire hose connection. Yeah, and yeah. it says standpipe. That's yeah. what that's for. Yes, that's what that's for. It's not a water tower, though. I think what they do is they use the existing water in the building to help fight the fire for the building if there's no, oh. if there's no fire uh, hydrant nearby. Oh, that's nice. Or somebody parked there. Yeah. Have you ever seen those like where they pictures where they smash the windows? Yeah, that makes me best. so and it's happy. Always, and it's always like a BMW. Of course it is. Oh, <laughs> speaking of, we have an episode on BMW coming up, so make sure you check that one out, people. Exciting. Um, one standpipe fun fact for you. Shoot. The first known installation of a standpipe in America was built in Germantown, Pennsylvania. Really? Near Philadelphia back in 1851. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by, I think it's by North Philadelphia. There goes, there goes that. Well, North, North Philadelphia is a lot nicer than the rest of is, Philadelphia. Is that true? I don't know. I know there was one part that the Fresh Prince of Bel Air came Ooh, from. He okay. got shipped out of there after he got in one little fight. Was it South and Philly? And his mom got scared. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> West Philadelphia? I f yeah, you might be right. Okay, West. okay so wow. water towers. Okay, so water towers. <laughs> so water towers, they serve three main purposes from, from my in depth video watching okay <laughs> uh the first is to store water in an elevated position and we'll talk about the the technical details mm. so they store it elevated they do to maintain pressure in a water system yeah um so that's the first thing uh it's also stored water for emergencies because water towers because they're stored in an elevation they work when there's no power so you That's don't true. you don't need pumps and all kinds of electricity and modern fancy things, electricity. fancy electricity, to have water when uh, there's a power outage. Um, one of one of the many articles that I read that said exactly the same thing on each of the pages. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
mentioned the same thing that you're saying that did you ever notice how we have power outages all the time you lose electricity or you lose cable or you lose internet which is the, just the worst mm-hmm. but you never seem to lose water depending on where you live well i got some info about that oh that'll be interesting to hear but i've never lost water yeah. and this so, is because of the water towers oftentimes yeah depending so, on where you live um so I think I said three. There I were me- two. I meant two. Oh, there's, there's only two, two reasons. Two primary reasons. Okay. <laughs> Unless you had another one. I, I think I said three. I was thinking of something else. Um, I think there's some like smaller use cases, we'll say. But the the water pressure and the in case of emergency stuff is a big one. And then even for firefighting, that's another one, especially for like individual buildings. Gotcha. But yeah, I think those are the two main reasons. So water towers have been around for for like literally ever not necessarily Forever? in like water tower format so i watched this video with our boy friend of the show neil degrasse tyson oh, and they really? brought up water towers so on his huh. star talk uh podcast he does he brought up water towers and the this concept of using gravity for your benefit for water goes all the way back to the roman aqueducts sure and they would basically take lakes in, you know, elevated mountains, and they would basically use the aqueducts to get that water all the way down. And they did 100% of this without pumps and electricity, obviously, because it was, you know, Roman days. <laughs> um, and actually, a lot of those aqueducts are still intact. They don't work anymore. They're not, no. they're not running water. Um, but this idea of using gravity uh, to have clean, fresh water in cities goes all the way back to, uh, to Roman days. So a couple things on that. Shoot. One, those so those lakes, elevated lakes, were just like naturally made water towers, which is kind Pretty of Pretty cool. much, yeah. Never thought of that. But two, when I was in Italy, you know, with my fancy podcast money, yep. Um, I, I remember seeing the aqueducts, especially when I was taking a train. I oh, think, they're like, you Rome. can see them in Italy? Yeah. I thought you were like out in the countryside. Like you well, had the... I, was, I was on the train and I saw them as oh. I was going by. They weren't nearly as impressive as I thought they were going to be. <laughs> Which I mean, and I, and don't get me wrong. Like I went to the Colosseum, and that was awesome, and it like that blew me away. That's but the aqueducts, cool. I was like, eh, I guess that's great. It's a gutter. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's, it's a gutter. Like, it's a fancy gutter. Okay, all right, moving on. So, um, so they've been around for a really, really long time in in some fashion. They've gotten obviously more kind of technologically uh, savvy, and one of the most important things that go into you know a water tower is the shape of a water tower and you ever thought about the shape of a water tower james i i have not ever thought about the shape of a water tower so all water towers are in some way shape or form either spherical yep in nature or if it's a standpipe they're at least cylindrical Cylindrical. it's a cylinder or or like elliptical elliptical there's never like a square corner essentially basically in why is that well i i think if you and i put on our engineering hats that's our cue that was, for we got nice. we got to make a sound effect for engineering okay, hats we if we that. put on our engineering hats one of the strongest like profiles that you can create is a curved profile so that's why they use um either you know, cylinders for standpipes and like towers you see on tops of buildings in New York City, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Or you see these spherical, you know, teardrop. They kind of like alien spacecrafts. Um, that's they, why they, they do that. They actually might be alien spacecrafts. I'll put that out there. Fun fact. Uh-oh. Whenever they, when the War of the Worlds video or the radio broadcast happened, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, people went out and started shooting at uh, water towers. Uh-uh. Neil deGrasse Tyson, it was on his thing. Well, he wouldn't lie. Yeah, of course, because people thought they were spacecrafts. Because really? Because they, they, they thought that that was like they were invading. Was that part of the story? That Yeah. That was like where they were being sheltered or something like that. I, I, I wasn't around during the War of the Worlds. You're so old. Broadcast. Sometimes I just assume this stuff. So, so the shape is super, super important. And another thing, if you notice um, on on some, the if you look on the exterior, as you lower on a water tower, there's more bracing at the bottom than there is at the top. Because if you think about it, I'm thinking about and it. And the way, and again, I'm using my our boy Neil Neil D. Um, who knew he was such a help? I Thanks, know. Neil. I know. This this is the most help he's given the show. Yeah. It so is. like the top half of. 
the water tower weighs, let's just say, a thousand pounds. Well, the bottom half weighs a thousand pounds. Not including the water, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying the weight oh, of the oh, water. Okay. So it's a thousand pounds of water on the top half. Well, there's a thousand pounds of water on the bottom half, and if you put those two together, it's two thousand pounds at the bottom. So you have to have more. Sh- you have to have more strength at the bottom of a water tower than you do at the top of a water tower, so it doesn't like blow out the sides. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so the banding Thanks, Neil. or the structural, you know, integrity gets stronger as you go lower on a uh, on a water tower. Okay. So before we move on, I think it's a good time for us to take a break for a word from our sponsor. I have to assume it's PA American Water, maybe maybe Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson, since we've mentioned his name like five times already. It's the Wilkenberg Pen Joint Water Authority. Oh, is that, is that, that your authority? <laughs> it, it used to be. I don't know who it is anymore. Um, is Star Talk even a thing anymore? I, I think he quit doing that, or okay. maybe he started again. I don't know. But we do not have a sponsor, and it hurts oh. my feelings. But we do have some shout outs. Um, I actually spaced our shout outs out a little bit, and I'm way behind on emails as per the usual. But here are a couple for you Eva S. Eva was one of the people that suggested the episode on environmental engineering. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, If you haven't checked that episode out, go do so. So thanks, Eva. Also had lots of thoughts on our earthquake episode and the technology involved, letting us know, you know, this is still a very new technology relative to a lot of things. So had a lot of good points about that. Uh, And then Matthew. Matthew did not give me a last name, so he's just going to go by Matthew. Um, Yeah, he's a senior in high school and looking to be a mechanical engineer and wanted some advice. So I gave my advice, and this was more like, what can I do to prep? Like, he already does a part-time job, I think, at a carpentry shop or something like that. I was like, you're already ahead of the game. Way like, ahead of the I game. I wish I would have had hands-on experience. Yeah, I was like I was cutting grass and right. that sort of stuff. So. I was bagging groceries, which was good for understanding spatial relation, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Your yeah. bags are always blowing out the yeah, bottom, basically. little old ladies. Yeah. So thank you for writing in. If any of you would like some suggestions on anything engineering related, would like to suggest some topics for shows, would just like to say hi, or would even like some amazing unprofessional engineering stickers, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And make sure you subscribe, oh, review, like, yeah. share, you name it. You name it, you should do it. Like us, share us, subscribe social media us. us. Oh, yeah, subscribe and leave us a review. Yep. How about that? Leave us a review. That's that's the best thing you could possibly do. All right, moving back on. Moving on. So there, I, I wanted to ask you a question. You said there's all these different shapes. There's, yes. So we talked about the stand pipe. Yes. That was just a big silo-looking thing. And then the ones we have today, we have like, they're like the skinny thingies with the sphere on top that is called like that. a flared steel column golf ball or tea style oh tower so those are my favorite kinds i think they are and those are the ones that get decorated to look like watermelons and like peaches the, and the apples peach one's real famous right yeah. the georgia place yeah. yeah um there's some i saw some that were decorated like corn yep in the Midwest. And they're very narrow ones, look like an ear of corn. Yeah. So do you know why we have these different shapes? No, I don't know if there's necessarily a reason oh. for one shape versus another. I think that oh. certain shapes are better at different volumes because I think the oh. average. So I think when you look at the golf tee ones, they hold somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000 gallons. Yeah. But I think when you get to uh, the fluted steel column, these are also called hydro pillars. So these are the ones that look like like a skinny cylinder and then another cylinder on top of it. Um, these are called hydro pillars. These ones can these ones tend to be a little bit larger, so they can go up to like a million gallons. Um, <clears throat> That's a lot of gallons. And then you get smaller versions. Then you hit you get multi columns. So these are the kinds that have three legs. These are the ones you think about when you think of like driving through like rural Kentucky and you see like an old Ugh. steel one. Uh, with three legs, uh, standpipes, which are basically just vertical columns. And then you also have uh, flat bottom reservoir tanks, and these tend to be massive. These ones are just like bottom? flat. Did I oh, say fat? Uh, no, oh, no, that's just what I heard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> flat bottom reservoirs. These are enormous. These are, in some cases, multi million gallon tanks. Uh, but these typically aren't used um, the way typical 
you know, towers are. Gotcha. It's, it's technically not a tower, so I don't even know why I mentioned it. I just wasted our time. Yeah, Sorry. thanks a lot for ruining this episode. So how do they work, James? Do you know how they work? Let me tell you a little bit about how they work. First off, water towers are really tall. Why? To provide pressure, like you mentioned already, right? That's one of the key things that they do. Each foot of height provides 0.34 PSI of pressure. That's pretty interesting, right? Yeah, so the, so the higher, higher it the higher is, the, the more pressure. Yeah, well, I guess so, generally speaking. So I guess it also depends on where you, where, where the water you, needs to go, right? Where your tap is. Yeah, oh, also that. Um, a typical, this is really interesting, a typical municipal water supply runs between 50 and 100 PSI, and most major appliances run around 20 to 30. So it gives you kind of an idea of how high this water would really have to be to uh, provide the necessary pressure needed. Uh, the water tower has to be tall enough to supply all of that pressure for the whole area that it supports. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find that these are then built typically on really high ground or as high as possible. And then they have that extra height Additional as well height. Yep. from how they're built. So take a look around. You're going to see typically they're going to be on the top of a hill or something like that. And if you look at them, you know, they don't look like they're that tall, but I think that's rather deceiving. When, when you, you get underneath the heights, them. Yeah. yeah. Because you're usually just driving by off in a distance because, again, you don't go up on those hilltops yep. or whatever. Uh, so they try and keep them high. And you're not going to necessarily see as many of them in areas like Pittsburgh. I, I, I think I can think of one or two around the city that I know of, like in Highland Park. I think they have one. There's one in Robinson. There's one in Robinson. But we're so hilly to begin with. It's difficult to find that, a location. Yeah, you don't necessarily need a water tower either because you can put almost like just a giant water tank or just a giant reservoir. And depending on its location, it provides enough water pressure then to support the system. So you're going to find these a lot in flatter regions like the Midwest. And even if you go to Ohio, there's that giant one for Canfield. Yep. That's the only one that I actually know of that's my favorite okay point to wave by um a couple fun facts though you're talking about the size and how much water these suckers hold so think of a normal in-ground swimming pool right pretty big holds a lot of water it actually holds about 20 to thirty thousand gallons of water and that is nothing compared to a water tower a typical water tower holds about 50 times that amount of water 50 swimming pools I saw a picture of a guy cleaning the inside of one. Oh, yeah. It was bananas. Oh, I bet. Like how big it is. Mike Rowe should do that. Do they still do dirty jobs? But jones? I don't think it's dirty. It's just water. It might a little be bit dirty. of algae in there, you know, mm, maybe. I guess that's true. Fun fact number two for you. Shoot. A water tower's tank is sized to hold about a day's worth of water for the community that it serves. Uh, so that if the pumps fail for whatever reasons, the pump breaks or electricity or for any reason, uh, you have... You have about a day before things start going bad for you. Unless you're like me, who then hoards all of the water yeah, in you his fill bathtubs, up the bathtub. Is, just yeah. to like laugh at the neighbors, like, oh, you don't have any water? And I just sit there and drink out of my tub. Mm. That's gross. Yeah. Um, so kind of cool. One of the big advantages of water towers also, which is very helpful, and not so much from our point of view, but like kind of, uh, it helps the municipality size its pumps for average flow rate rather than peak demand so this can save the community lots of money so they had lots of examples on the internets where it would be like think about um seven in the morning let's say a lot of people are getting ready for work i mean not me lots i'm of still in bed, yeah, yeah but a lot of yeah lots of showers lots of brushing your teeth lots, lots of, toilet, of flushing. toilet flushing like all of these things um are going on and so the run rate is super high but then at say three in the morning probably not so high and so those water towers are able to help support the demand during that 7 a.m time but then during the 3 a.m time can it can then get the water pumped back up and replenish. fill it back up so you don't need to uh, have things running full force all the time. Yeah, and, and I think one of the other benefits, like the municipality, not, not only it, it's it's pure like economics with like electricity. If you think about it, if you don't have water towers, you have to run pumps 100% of the time to maintain that water pressure. Where if you think of like a water tower, you can just use gravity and you have a single yeah. pump that takes it up to the top of the water tower mm -hmm. and then you just let gravity provide the necessary pressure as long as, you know, 
um, you know, you have enough, enough, enough pressure in there, uh, but you don't have multiple pumps throughout the system, making sure that it's always pumped. So yeah, it's another I appreciate benefit. gravity. It does a lot for it us. Does. Yeah. It does. It does. A few, few more things about how they work. So in most towns, people's drinking water is going to come from like a well or a river or a reservoir, something like that. I think, boy, I hope mine all comes from a reservoir because our rivers are still gross in my My guess opinion. is yours comes from the water sewage treatment plant. Yeah. Because they treat it and then they well, clean sure. it. And they well, sure. Well, sure. This water, even this water is going to kind of ah, go gotcha. through a treatment plant, but I don't know where it comes from from there. Um, the water is treated in the water treatment plant to remove sediment by filtration, uh, get rid of bacteria, all of that stuff. Turds. Turds. As, <laughs> as Luke says in one of our episodes, uh, I think it's poo water you say all <laughs> poo, the time. Poo water. So if you haven't checked out our episode on, I don't even remember what it was, but we'll call it poo water. Go ahead and do that. Um, Sorry. So so the output of this clean water is then pumped through with high lift pumps pressurized that shoots this water through the system and all the feeder pipes. And this is exactly what you were then saying. You know, some of that water might get siphoned off here or there for different needs, but it's also going to get pumped up into the uh, water tower then. So if the pump is producing more water than the water system needs, like for all of our houses or whatever else, the excess flow automatically shoots into that tank. If the community is demanding more water than it needs, of course, it's going to come from that tank and help fit those needs. Um, this was where I was supposed to say, go check out the poo water episode, okay. but you beat me to it. Sorry. So thanks for that. Um, in a city like New York City, uh, tall buildings often need to solve their own water pressure problems, especially when they're really tall buildings. In right? New York? Any building over six stories needs to have it's, it's by code. Any building over six stories needs to have a, uh, a a self-sustaining water tower on top of the building. That's really interesting and a fun fact about that. New York City, millions of people still get their water supplies met by water towers, and this is one of the last largest or last large cities that relies on this system still. Do you know why it's six stories? Think of gravity, James. Think of gravity. Why? The reservoir that provides the water it's for there. New York City, the water level at the reservoir is somewhere around that five, six story level mark. So it can provide the pressure to that location, but you go up one more story, gravity doesn't work anymore. It's not going to push the water above its own level well, at the reservoir. Interesting. I wonder where that reservoir is. Like. How far away must that be? I don't know. Because, I mean, New York City is kind of big. Fun fact. Oh, I want to hear it. All the rooftop tanks in New York City, not all. I think nowadays they're all built this. Wow. But the majority. So this is just a lie. It, well, a it's, fun it, lie. It's okay. a fun fact lie, truth-ish. Okay. Uh, is built by uh, the Rosenweck Tank Company. Oh. They've been building tanks since the 1800s, and they can't be made out of steel. They have to be wood, and they have to be untreated because it's drinking water, well, so they yeah. can't put chemicals in the they wood. They have to be wood? They, they have to be wood because if steel, steel rusts out. There's all kinds of problems. They're heavy. You can sort of coating in there? No. They, they make them out. They, they still, to this day, make the majority out of them, make the majority of them out of wood i bet they make a lot of money so the wood they say lasts 30 to 40 years steel tanks are only like 10 years so they got to oh, replace well, them more often in the wood it's just you know you can drink the water just it's... think of this business like okay i have the contract for all of new york basically to make these things well now i need to be the one that does the maintenance too that's exactly Ooh, well i better the go control systems yeah, like, and... oh what a yep. what a scam all right before we move on any further let's take a break for this week's luke's rant okay so we're gonna talk about the conversion of water towers to homes a little bit later what so they convert water towers old water towers have been decommissioned people okay. buy them and turn them into houses well, that's absurd. Yeah, we'll talk about it. it is absurd. But what's even more absurd is this tiny home craze. Oh, yeah. Have you, have you seen this? Yeah, oh, yeah. So basically, if you go on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, like any of these home magazines, basically this new, it, and it's not new, but it, it seems new to me because I, I don't pay attention to this, to, to, to pop culture. Yeah, um, you're your own man. I am my own man. That's right. But basically, this whole like <laughs> shipping container, tiny home thing, it's just like, is it really, like, is that what we've come to where you want to have a home that is like 300 square feet? Or it's in a shipping container. 
I mean, is that really what people want? If you haven't checked out our episode on shipping containers, we you should one. do we so. One? Yeah, and we okay. talked about turning them into homes and it what just, a stupid idea. It just, it just seems like, I, I don't know, I, I could see like a cabin or maybe like a bomb shelter or like a garage, but you're going to live in so a tiny home? I'll I mean, put it out there that tiny homes are more cost effective. Way more cost effective. I'll give you that. And they're probably better for the environment, maybe. <sighs> So you're, you're making me look bad. I'm, Is that what oh, you're trying to oh, do? Oh, I'm no. Don't get me wrong. I do not want a tiny home. I got rid of my home that was not all that tiny to have a much larger home, and I don't need any of that space. Podcast money. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I I do not want a tiny home. My brother actually is working on the tiny home in his backyard. Oh. And. It seems absurd to me as well. Oh, yeah, I don't. It, like, just, it just doesn't make sense. It seems like a Unless craze. It's, yeah. If you're doing that because you're a trendy hipster, stop it. Yeah. If you're doing it because it's a cost effective way for you to live and whatnot, yes. okay. I support that. Okay. How about that? I, okay. We'll, we'll agree on that. See, I'm trying not to offend our Thank listeners. Thank you. Yeah. But I, I'm with you, Luke. So, yeah. Tiny homes are silly. So, back to it now. Back to it. So, one of these crazy things, and, and I don't think I knew this. Up until we did this research. Uh-huh. So apparently, when these tanks get decommissioned and they're not using them any longer, they build a new one, people buy these 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 water towers and they convert them How do you get to homes. How, so don't you have to go up four million steps to get up to the big top? <laughs> Every time you're doing a grocery run. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine doing groceries? Maybe you have like a pulley system out the window. So the really, really nice ones, they look like they have elevators. Oh. So so they basically oh. retrofit and put an elevator in it. And you take an oh. elevator up to the top of it. How much does it cost to put an elevator so in So apparently house? they're relatively cheap to buy. Elevators? Like, no, not, not the elevator. Oh. The, the actual, so like you could buy the water tower, right, for let's say i think i saw one was for sale and the surrounding like five acre property Ooh. it was for sale for like a hundred thousand dollars wow that's but it's not like bad. but you got to tear down this 55 year old steel you know water tower if you want to do something with it but the idea but is I, I thought you were keeping the water no no tower. no but like that's the idea but then if you're if you're gonna redo that water tower could you imagine like so, like, you're going to call up a contractor and be like, yeah, I want you to work, you know, 180 feet in the air and put floors in and electrical and plumbing. And How are you ever going to sell that thing? Oh, it's like, yeah, it's like a log cabin. No one buys log cabins, you know? Don't just they? like, no, that doesn't happen. It's like, it's like one of the worst investments to, like, you never want to build a log cabin house because nobody buys them. Because oh, they're they're very niche market. Like oh. if you don't want a log cabin, you're not going to look at a log cabin as a as an option. But oh. a water tower is even more extreme. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you never sell tower. this thing. So, but How yeah, absurd. But apparently, like you can buy them and their surrounding property pretty cheap. But then to re to turn these into a home, yeah, it's like millions of dollars. Uh, that makes sense. Huh. Yeah, like millions and millions of dollars. Interesting. So, um, yeah, I don't support that. How about that? Go for a tiny home before you go for a. Yeah, water tower exactly. home. That's ridiculous. I feel like celebrities probably live in water towers. Well, maybe they do. I bet you Leonardo DiCaprio lives in a water tower. You think, you I, think so? I've never liked him. You don't like Leo? <sighs> I don't know. I, just, I know a lot of models sorry. that like him. All right. All right. Um, sorry. Wow. I had a few fun facts. Do you have anything else you wanted to cover before I hit on these? Uh, no, I got a couple, too. I'll interject. How about you interject? Fun fact for you, Luke. Shoot. This one's just for you. Water towers can affect your insurance rates. Did you know that? They can. Uh, during a fire, the water demand increases significantly, if that comes as a surprise to you, and it may greatly exceed the capacity of the pumps at the water plant. A water tower guarantees that there will be enough pressure to keep the water flowing through the fire hydrants. So that's super good. Fire insurance rates are normally lower in a community which the water system has water towers. So, you know, take that into consideration next time you're buying a home. Fun fact. Ooh, let's hear it. During the Cold War, there was heightened security around water uh, towers oh. all over the United States because if you think about, like, if you want to go kill, like, your enemy, just poison the water. So Oh, poison. They weren't going to blow them up. No, no. They, they, oh. they, they wanted to, like, kill a whole bunch oh, of... Oh, they really... So, like, oh, yeah. So, like, that that's something that... I mean, if you think I about it... Reservoirs and you all ta- that. You take, you take clean water away from... Like uh, 
a country and they're just they're, it's going to turn well, and into if it's poison i mean or they're they all going to die or they die or yeah. or if you ruin it either way it's wow. a bad thing so so during the cold war Thank and during you. certain parts of you know our you know clash with the ussr as it was called back in the was day back in the day. um yeah so water towers had heightened security around them interesting i would not be good at war i don't think because yeah. i'm not that bad i'm I don't a like, I don't nice like, person i don't like getting hit Oh, I don't like that either. Fun fact, Luke. Shoot. Wastewater operators can determine when halftime of the Super Bowl is <laughs> based this one. on the significant increased flow rate. Because Abs- because everybody gets up and flushes. Absolutely. I mean, unless you want to watch J Lo and Shakira, um, then you you know took that time. I'm so to glad use I was on an airplane when that happened. Were you? Yeah, I was oh, flying to man. Birmingham. Yeah, um, that was that was something. Fun fact: in the United States, the Louisville Water Tower oh, yeah. in Kentucky uh, was built in 1860. It's the oldest surviving water tower in the country, and they still use this I thing. I saw that. Isn't that crazy? 1860. 1860. I thought it was in wrong. Kentucky. I thought I thought it was 1960. Whenever I cut and did oh, my, yeah, I didn't yeah. cut and paste. I did research. When you researched it. When I researched it. Right. Um, yeah. At the library. Another fun fact. Okay, one more fun fact. The Union Water Sphere, also Ooh. known as the Union Water Tower, uh, it's uh, it's the tallest f- spherical shaped tower in the world, and it's in our favorite state, our New Jersey, the Garden State, the Garden State is in like New Jersey. Call it. I yes. don't think there's any gardens in New Jersey. They're they're made of pavement <laughs> and garbage. <laughs> Man, someday Philadelphia is just going to move to Jersey. Yeah. And the world will be There a goes our place. entire New Jersey East Coast and Philadelphia listenership. listeners. I'm sorry, New Jersey. I love you. I promise. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, any other fun facts, Luke? Nope. I'm all out. Awesome. Well, this actually was pretty interesting. Better than I thought. Way better than I thought. Way better than I, I thought. I appreciate all the great research that you did. Those of you that stuck around, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed our topic today if you have any topics or anything else you want to share with us mistakes we made whatever the case may be never email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com until next time see ya